Hi, this is Craig and welcome back to Cruising Off Duty. If you've been watching the channel, you know that I sailed a 50-foot catamaran, an exquisite X5, from Cape Town, South Africa, across the South Atlantic, over the equator, through the Caribbean. In the previous episodes, you'll notice that we've had beautiful skies and calm winds, which is not great if you're trying to make some serious time up on this passage. But don't worry, this episode, everything changes. We get up to 30 knots of wind, so much wind that we start having to reef our sails and we're out there bouncing around in the ocean dealing with fog, dealing with cold, kind of a lot more miserable than what you've seen in the past, but it's more real life. Cause it's the kind of sailing you're gonna find when you're sailing in these extremely Southern parts of the Atlantic Ocean. But it's not all bad because we get visited by dolphins and tons and tons of seals in this episode. So you're gonna to wanna to check that out. Before we get into this episode, I just wanna thank A, my patrons, some of which who have been around since the beginning of the channel, long since before I was doing any of these transatlantic voyages. And in this particular voyage, a bunch of sponsors that jumped on board to help defer the costs of me flying halfway around the world and spending eight weeks away from my regular job. Thanks so much. I couldn't have done it without you guys. And uh, yeah, without any further ado, let's get on to this episode. We anchor and hoist the sail. Day four, it is super windy. Tomas is trying to reef in. I just want to hook it up because we're going to use for days, I think, probably okay. a couple of days in this. Okay. These going up to do the secondary uh, reefing points. There's a single line reefing and then there's also the secondary reefing. Let's have both set up. So long and short, we had forecast of 15 gusting to 20 and we've been getting more like 22 gusting to 30 and we had way too much sail out. We had our screecher and our main out. So uh, we're going down wind, but, so the apparent wind isn't as strong as what I'm telling you, but that's the true wind speed. But just way overpowering, as you can see now, how much we're bouncing. I have to go just a little bit lower. Almost there. A little bit lower? Yeah, just a little bit. So I can get off and let me pull it back. So you can see the uh, massive swells. Plus, you can't tell this from the footage, but it's freaking cold out. So the jib, the little blade jib, is the only thing that's propelling us right now. The main is, uh, is loose and luffing. But, uh, yeah. We're taking the second reef in. Sean just woke up from all the banging and slamming. Oh, I've been up, but I mean, you guys are doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm learning. My boat doesn't have this set up, so I don't know how to do this at all. I'm in mast furling. All good, Tama? Yeah. What were you adjusted? 29. We were getting 22 to 29. It was way too much wind. I just want to set up the secondary reef as uh, you know that extra point we put up. Yep. So so we won't we can go a long time on this. Go with the jet and two reef. We will put up the reacher with two reefs on the main. Yeah. I don't know how to do this I'm kinda of glad I don't because that doesn't look fun. Coming in and out of the cockpit, up onto the onto the deck, in uh, spraying cold water. But this kind of boat, that's what's going to happen. I'm not going to get a cat in the future with any mass furling, so I'm going to have to learn how to do this. I 
again out to the mast. The weaving is finished. All balanced now. Awesome. It, normally the jumping up and down you wouldn't have to do because with the single line it was already weaved. Right. But it came up with this system, you know, to take out totally the chafing. So this is your weaving line now, second reef. Look. Yeah. That's your reefing line. Because you've no attached it at the mast. Yeah, attach it there and then we've got a, 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 a clutch on the boom. Okay. So what it does, the at the, where I attach on the mast, that holds the tack, right. and then the clutch holds the clue down, okay. but there's only that where tension. All the, the line going up and down and here, all that, we take out all the, the, all the tension. Cool. And that's because we plan to leave it in for a while, right? Yeah, for probably for a couple of days, just going on the same tack and reef, it's, it's just better thing for right. this. Good job. <laughs> okay, overnight starting of day four was very eventful for everybody. So uh, Steve, who was on from midnight to three, had fog so thick that they couldn't see barely the front of the boat. And Neil came on from three to six, and uh, the fog was dissipating, but that's when the wind really, really, really picked up. And then I took over at six, and he said, man, we're at the edge. I think if it gets much stronger than this, you're gonna have to wake up Tomas and uh, help him uh, reef the main so that's exactly what happened instead of it being 22 23 knots when neil was up it turned into 26 to 28 knots when i was up and that's what you saw was tomas jumping into action to, to reef the main because it was just too much it was overpowering the uh, autopilot so eventful so and now you can see the swells going by every once in a while we get a monster but right now it's not too too bad running through this surf and uh pretty high waves and while i was out there I saw a dolphin swimming beside the boat. Oh, there they are. They're swimming even in these massive waves. They're swimming in front of the boat. There they are. Even though we're surfing down these waves, they're still trying to swim with us. Catch them from time to time. It's not really the type of weather where I want to go stand out on the bow and try and film them though. You'll see every once in a while we there like that, where we're surfing down a wave, the bow gets really close to the water. The yacht club at Welvis Bay. Oh really? Oh yes. So get your shirt, get your shirts and ties out. It's kind of a fun thing to visit yacht clubs uh, it's from around it's the world. It's brilliant. You know? I'll tell you what, we've really so absolutely to love going to yacht clubs because the thing about them I'm is that it's free entry so subsidised booths. They usually do really good food and they usually have fantastic yeah. teams. Wow. But the, like the one in the top uh, has just this amazing location. Uh, it's really like, like 20, 27, uh, where it's like next to the castle. I think it's good. You've got to get your B-roll, right? They're the best yeah. ones. They're the best ones. Yeah. They're, on, they're on sticks. Hey, Craig. Yep. It's famously difficult to capture... I know, um, on cameras. Uh, Waves. Waves. Waves, but I've seen a couple of the bloggers do a technique where they're they're showing it in like slow motion. Oh yeah. And it seems to be more effective actually yeah, at yeah. showing the the drama of the sea state when they do it in slow motion. I don't know why. So yeah. it seems like too. Not only is it visually hard to capture on camera, but the minute you pull your camera out, the waves just sort of 
Of course. It's Smooth like, out. Then like you put the camera sets. down and all of a sudden, wow! Here comes the sets. Oh yeah, here comes the set. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Ride it, baby! Yeah! And down. Side turn, it's gonna come past you now. And then up the next one. What have you got on your feet, Craig? Socks. I wouldn't stand there in just socks, mate, because you're gonna die. Yeah, if we go hard, you'll slide right out. Well, that's finding are, bare feet very grippy. Yeah. Barefoot or crocs? Right. Oh, oh, yeah, fair point. Yeah. <laughs> One less mouth to feed? Well, you know, well, the no, Russians are... Body oh, out. Jesus, that's really <laughs> sick. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we gotta give me win on both. Good <laughs> <laughs> Steve. You sick man. <laughs> <laughs> Hello people, this is the end of day four of sailing. It's been a miserable day, especially for me. Earlier, I, I probably threw some shots in there. It was gusting to 30, above 30 knots, and some crazy white caps and swells, and just a confused sea too, because the swells are coming from the south, but the wind was coming from the east. So it was like being in a washing machine. Uh, last night was crazy, hard, really almost impossible to sleep because um, I'm sleeping in the cabin on the port side. The waves were coming over the starboard side, uh, so the starboard hull would rise and then the wave would go under the boat and slam into the port hull, which is where I was sleeping. So not only are you bouncing up and down, but every once in a while you hear BOOM when a wave hits the inside of the thing. Now that's a catamaran thing, that's not an exquisite thing. Um, but then later today, by that point I was already feeling a little, a little nauseous um, and I got no sleep, which of course if you don't sleep you're tired, you get nauseous even more easy. Um, they finally changed the, the sail plan. Instead of having a main and a, and a genoa, they just have the genoa out now and now we're going more dead downwind. So we're not having that, that cross wave action slapping us and making us tilt back and forth. So it's much more comfortable now. But anybody who's ever been car sick from reading a book in a car or something, even when you put the book down, it takes a long time to stop feeling car sick, even though you don't usually get car sick. And that's sort of how I feel. Once I felt seasick or nauseous, it's really, really, really hard to get that feeling to go away. Even when they changed the way the boat was of sailing to minimize the slamming and pounding and all that stuff. It still, it's been a tough day for me. And now I'm starting my evening watch and look what I've got here. It's almost fogged right out. The wind has also died down a bit. It's only 23 knots instead of 30. So uh, it's still uh, pretty rolly though. Anyways, yeah, not something I knew I was susceptible to as seasickness, but it's been uh, first day and now the uh, overnight of the third day into the fourth day. So two times now, not enjoying that at all. Oh well, something I'll have to get over. Good morning people and welcome to day five of our sailing voyage. Feeling better, feeling more perky, got a good night's sleep last night. Waves have certainly calmed down. Wind is really, really low to the point we can't even sail. We're going dead down wind and it's only like eight knots of wind. So we dropped the sails just recently in the last hour and we're motoring. Look at the fog. In case you're wondering why we keep getting fog in the morning, like you can't see anything other than your radar and your and your AIS, you can't tell what's out there. But in case you're wondering why we seem to have so much fog here, it's because there's actually a uh, Antarctic current that runs up here. So it's really, really cold water. But clearly as we go further and further north, it's getting hotter and hotter the air. So every morning we wake up to, well, even in the middle of the night, it's just fog. Uh, so that's the reason. So Kind of cool, kind of eerie and cool at the same time. But like I say, I feel, uh, I really appreciate the sailors of old times that didn't have radar or anything because you're really just sailing almost like blind. Can't see anything out here. So I'll show you my thing. This is our grid where we'd see AIS. If I zoom out, there are some fishing boats out here in the deeper water, but uh, nothing close by. And change this combo. So there's our radar. Nothing on the radar. Thing on the AIS, so it makes us feel a little better. Now, obviously, you still got to try and keep your eyes out in case there's some, you know, fishing boat, small fishing boat with no AIS and very small doesn't hit the radar. So you got to keep your eyes peeled in case you got to do a last-minute uh, avoidance maneuver. But so far, great day. 
We're about 157 miles from Walbus Bay, which is our spot in Namibia we're stopping. So it looks like a little bit over 24 hours. So we're gonna get there, unless we speed up, we're gonna get there around midday tomorrow. So that's, that's okay. Tomas is out there on the bow of the boat. We're close enough to shore now that he can get cell signals. And he's calling uh, Phoenix Marine to get the uh, service crew to meet us in Walbus Bay and do any last minute um, fixing. I don't think there really is anything we've noticed, but you know, they go everything with over everything in a, with a fine tooth comb, just to, it's like a big long uh, test sail, and they'll see if there's any issues they need to tighten anything or adjust anything. And, after sale service. One feature of this boat is it has a bread maker and today's Tomas's day to make bread. We make bread about every day and uh, Sean's bought this huge professional like bread maker for his boat. It smells so good. There they are. There's some seals that are playing just like dolphins. Oh there's some over there too. There's a bunch of them. Wow, did, did you get that one? Yeah, and there's one there's out there. One there. And there's another one over there. Oh, lots oh. of them near jumping here yeah. in the fog. Yeah. Seals in the fog. It's pretty cool. Like gorillas in the mist. I know, eh? <laughs> Look at them, their little fins hang up in the air. That's cool. Get your <laughs> fucking <edge. laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm gonna get all the time. I'll do it. Okay, ready? Okay, it's morning breakfast. Okay, here's what we're gonna do, guys. We've got scrambled eggs and cheese. I'm gonna put the eggs in the bowl, and then we've got avo, sausage, various hot sauces, salt and pepper, so you can uh, you can season to your taste. Thanks. Oh. <laughs> Look at all these seals. Wow, it's like a feeding frenzy here. Must be like a bait for under them. Wow, that's crazy. It's a lot of seals in one spot. They're all peeking at us, eh? They all stick their head out of the water. What is that? That's so cool. Look at them. Now are they chasing us? It's a bait bowl under each other. It must be. Yeah. Tons of them. That's crazy. That must have been what we saw earlier. There was like 20 all in a group yeah. earlier today. And you were like, no way. Now being that it's a fairly light wind day and we're going downwind, this is the perfect occasion to use what ends up being our favorite sail, which is this parasail. When you're going downwind and you can get the boat to move along at a pretty good clip, all those little swells and bouncy waves don't seem to be as jostling. The boat seems way smoother and way more comfortable. And so, yeah loved the sail. Either get something like this or get an asymmetrical spinnaker if you're on a catamaran planning to do a circumnavigation following the trade winds because you're going to use the sail a lot. Okay, we're going to try and put the rotten sea in while we're already sailing. Might be a bit too quick but we'll see. Yeah. Sean has his iPad out here, he's checking the and Obviously it will be more on the surf. What were we at, 25? Yeah. No, we were now at 35. It's, now it's minus 9. Look at that, down to 9. How many? It's, it's on the surf, it's definitely. So it was minus right 35 the, uh, before, so you got about 20, right? 20, 25? Close to it. If you have this, this if it starts like at 8 knots, really it starts really charging. Uh, uh, anything like... 8, 10, that's where what we did the other day, that would be two two thousand. <laughs> All right, we're putting this air sailor down and these guys decided to come pay us a visit. Look at that. It's a lot of seals. Man. Well, that's the end of this episode, but if you're interested in buying a catamaran, you're definitely going to want to check out the next episode. The next episode is going to be a standalone episode that's going to be just a detailed walkthrough tour of the Exquisite X5 with Tomas while we're sailing under a parasail. That's right, a full detailed tour, not like the ones we do at the Annapolis Sailboat Show where it's at a dock, but a detailed tour of the boat, top to bottom, 
while sailing. So yeah, if you're interested in buying a catamaran, whether it's the Exquisite or any other boat, and you want to compare it to this one, definitely check out that episode. Subscribe so you don't miss it. If you enjoyed this episode and you found it entertaining or informative, show the channel some love by giving it a thumbs up. And until next time, this is Craig signing off, wishing you safe cruising and ciao for now. We anchor and hoist the sail. <laughs>